Well, thank you guys for coming. I hope you're enjoying the tacos. Um, there should be some more afterwards if you guys are so hungry. Um, There's obviously more beer for you guys. Um, but welcome to Tech Code. I think this is probably a lot of your first time here. So I just wanted to give you a quick introduction about who we are, um, and then we'll get on with your you know, regularly scheduled programming. Um, so Tech Code is a global network of incubators. We have eight locations in five different countries. We have locations in China, in Germany, in Israel, in South Korea, and here, of course. Um, and we provide funding, mentorship, supply chain resources, um, curriculum, things like that. So if you're interested in, you know, I think some of you guys might be in some of those things, come talk to me or Steve, he's the guy with the camera, uh, afterwards. Um, and one of the special things we're doing this year is we're launching an accelerator in April that's focused on startups who are in the AI and hardware space, so basically smart devices. So if you guys do that, come talk to us too. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and so today, I know you guys are here for uh, Roy Terry. We're very excited to have him. I'm Steve with TechCode. I'm one of the business development managers here. I run some of the events as well as the accelerator program that we're going to be having in April. Uh, so let's welcome Roy Terry, the Silicon Valley Pitch Doctor, who's going to help you perfect your pitch. Uh, let's just get a poll. Who's, who's a founder? Who's a... Nice. I'm sure everyone here is a founder. Who's, who's looking for money? Nice. Who's an accelerator or an incubator right now? All right. Well, soon to be tech code. Okay. We'll have uh, Roy present. Hi guys, so there's a little switch, they got a little switch on me because uh, originally there was going to be a tech, uh, excuse me, a uh, startup weekend held here. We hope sometime in the future we'll get to do that. Yes. But uh, just by way of explaining, I'm here to pimp startup weekend because I think it's an amazing thing. It's also Friday, so I got a beer. <laughs> and I think we should just have fun. And there's something I need to confess a little bit. So I have been a pitch coach now uh, for about five years in the Valley working with different uh, startups and some corporate folk because, you know, innovation inside corporations also happens. And a couple things that are really not secrets but it feels like a secret is most pitches really suck. <laughs> so, yeah. And in fact, recently, because, uh, because I've been slowly sunk into my psyche about how bad they are, sometimes I think of VCs are like junkyard dogs. They will dig through any amount of trash to find a bone. However, they don't like that. So if you can have less trash and a better pitch, why not? Better chance of winning. But there's another thing too, is that um, the pitches that are working for VCs, if you go to Sand Hill Road, is one kind of thing. We'll, we'll kind of talk about that. And it won't be surprising, but maybe we'll talk about it at a level that you'll, you'll learn a few things. But the kind of pitch you would want to do for Startup Weekend is very different. And in fact, I took the opportunity to assemble some special material to try to get us into the mood for that. So Startup Weekend is a crazy thing. That's why I say it's pitching over the top. Have, who has been to a Startup Weekend? So shout it out. What was that like? Well, why did you come back? What was it like? Well, I was a student. Yeah, you were a student. That explains everything. No, not yet. <laughs> so Startup Weekend is fun to build a project. Well, for me, I'm an engineer, yeah. so for me, it's just like building a project. But in 36 hours, it's awesome. So yeah. 36? I've heard fi well, so 54, yeah. but do you count for sleep? Is that it? <laughs> yeah, they actually went to sleep. <laughs> so I've heard very, there's various advice, so I looked up some stuff on Quora, which I'll also share. Who, who knows Quora? Pretty good site. I was impressed. So they have a lot of commenters about this, so there's some, some tidbits I'll share with that. So you also went. Yeah? Yeah, so I was at Startup Weekend last weekend in Monterey, um, and the, the reason I liked it was to work with a whole different group of people who have different skill sets and try to bring everybody together and then delegate throughout the weekend and keep people busy and just look at all different angles of the business and then you have a goal at the end which is the pitch yeah and uh, so it's good to have that goal and you know have a short timeline to bring everybody people together with different skills and create something together cool thank you and I'll, I'll ask you to any anyone who's been there or uh, has the flavor of it maybe you know someone who went there shout it out if, you, if I'm getting something wrong you want to add into it so there's a there's more than one pitch there's a pitch in the beginning right. which is what I focused on because if you, um, you know, the most exciting thing would be to go with your idea and you be the leader of the team and rally the troops and so on and get things done. So that's the angle I'm going to take on uh, a startup weekend. And I have one more confession. So I was talking to Steve. Yeah, please. 
So at, at the weekend I was at, there was 100 people, 38 yeah. people pitched, and only 10 got chosen. So yeah, yeah. So working on your initial pitch is great because mine didn't get chosen. Good. So I can't. I can't wait to show you the special material I have on this. I hope you'll find it informative because I do. One of the things that helps pitches suck, which we would like to get rid of, is that people don't. Um, they have inhibitions, right? We're inhibited about really showing our enthusiasm. In fact, maybe because we're not all that clear on the thinking. So I've got some material that shows people who are really clear, and the passion comes out, and you'll feel it in your gut. Whether you want to adopt their behavior, I don't know, but it's going to be fun. So I didn't know what Startup Weekend was. I thought, oh, Startup Weekend. That sounds like, yeah, you get a bunch of people together to do a startup. And Steve says, no, it's a franchise. Oh, franchise. So everyone's learning all the time. What do we think about this? So I say it's over the top, <coughs> and you'll understand what I mean by that in a sec. Let's see if this even works. Oh. See, why doesn't this turn on by itself? <laughs> by the way, how was parking for you tonight? Anybody have trouble parking? Anybody? Oh. Yep, that's great. Okay, so I won't do the parking pitch. <laughs> Thank me, because I've got a start of weekend thing for parking. I can run. So, when I say it's over the top, look at these people, they are crazy. Yeah, so this is from a while back. I'm not sure exactly what spirit we think it was. They're crazy, but the one thing they all are is pretty doggone happy. So once again, I'm pimping spirit weekend because I think it's an amazing potential experience. Steve, do you have a comment on this one? You yes. weren't there. That uh, looks like a good event. Yeah, it's amazing. So it is a crazy idea. This is actually what I think. Um, my idea of a crazy thing. Yeah. It takes four freaking years to get a bachelor's degree, and then two more if you want a master's or an MBA, and then all you're ready to do is go out and beg for a job. <coughs> four, four or maybe six years of pregnancy. So these are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, the romance and marriage is really hard to quantify, what with Tinder and things, but uh, <laughs> the bottom line is this is not so because the dream would be to create a, uniform, a unicorn in 54 hours, or at least uh, get the momentum and get, get some of the right people, and then go forward from there. Now, in many cases, this won't happen. You won't win. You won't hit the jackpot. You won't win the lottery. But, God, it just seems like a fantastic opportunity. And who knows? They know that it's a thing. Um, but it's nutty. So here, here are my arguments for doing it. Um, one of the things I've noticed in years of doing pitch workshops is that sometimes I see the same people pitching a pretty similar idea, or maybe they do a slight rev on it, and it never quite gets any traction. And frankly, maybe it never even gets totally coherent, because they aren't getting the kind of strength of feedback they need to kind of go psh, 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 wake up and really get in the game and commit and react to people. They just keep kind of, kind of gestating it themselves. So start a weekend is an amazing way to get yourself out of any kind of rut or uh, attachment to ideas that other people don't resonate with. So whatever your innovation, if it doesn't excite anybody else, it's, it's a hobby. So my suggestion is you do start a weekend because you don't want to be this guy. Comments from the start of weekend folks. Am I, am I making stuff up that isn't true or would you agree? 54 hours. Did you walk out feeling a little different? Well, I would just say based on your other comment, you're right. The first pitch is about passion. And we came in second place, and it was because the founder was passionate oh, in sweet. her speech, as well as you know, we had done a good job and put the final pitch together. But she was chosen, I think, first because of her passion for it. And then the judges mentioned it at the end. So passion is definitely important. Nice. And can, what did you learn about how much prep she'd done or how she sort of generated that, that pitch and the, and the concept behind it? She had basically just thought of the idea. Wow. And I think just had done her own, um, it was based on her own life experience and a problem she thought in her own life. Mm -hmm. So she, so, so I think she a lot of us. She had heart behind it. I have, an, I have an engineering degree, and I think a lot of us who are engineers are a lot in our heads. And so sometimes it's better if you don't think about things a lot and just come from your heart, like you said, and, and that's what won. So. so guys, if your heart is talking to you about a startup idea, guess what? There's lots of time in the program for people to come up and practice and get the good, get solid feedback. We're we are not we're friendly, but we will not um, we will not polish something that won't take a polish. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. So think about it if you want to practice in a bit. 
It's going to cut coming up. So who's in? Who's, who's at least a game for maybe a start weekend? Give me a few hands, please, so I don't completely just give up. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm all about the pitch. I think the pitch is a magic thing because it crystallizes the idea. And it actually proves to yourself that you understand how the enterprise or projects work. But in Startup Weekend, as you'll see, the pitch is a different animal. And we'll cover the standard pitch, we'll cover the Startup Weekend pitch. So I mentioned Quora, which I like a lot, and I've been investigating, oh, what do people say about Startup Weekend? So here are some of the quotes. Ever, whatever I do, you pitch, show passion. So obviously, that's been mentioned already. The thing is, the advice of someone telling you to show passion is not all that helpful, because it's something you have to find inside. So if you come up and practice, you might start getting closer. Plan at least two hours of standing up and repeating, revising your pitch, getting the words right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is this is like this is like the geometry teacher telling you to do your homework. I'm really sorry, it's tedious, but this is what it takes sometimes. If you want to win, you could just go for the experience. I don't know how the food is, but it's good. My favorite, very simple to the point. So that's what I, that's the wisdom I found on Quora. And in order to get to the, what you want to do for a startup weekend, we need to traverse what you've already have imbibed possibly as a standard pitch, just to put it to rest. So is some, who is familiar with this, this basic format? Yeah. So have you done it? Have you delivered it? Or you've seen it a lot of times? Yeah, it seems pretty standard. Yeah, it's standard. It's very standard. In fact, this is, there's a guy at Stanford named Chris Lip who's studied the winners of TechCo, excuse me, TechCrunch and uh, <coughs> South by Southwest and, and similar huge contests. And this is what he, this is what he said. This is what you do. You, you do the overview. Problem, solution, market, business model, and you know, team and ask. This is what I put in, call these headlines. And this can be done in about three and a half, four minutes. And it looks like this. So this is a picture from the Cardinal Pitch Club, where I hang out sometimes as a panelist. But guess what? You don't get to do this. So we've got to kind of let go. We can talk about this. And we can talk about aspects of it. Uh, but this is designed for really serious uh, communication with an investor who's really trying to tick off all the little boxes. You know, has this entrepreneur really thought out the problem and, and, and how they're going to grow and do they have a viable business and have they validated it? What's their traction? You know, all those things that are so serious. Are they going to call you back? But it's we weekend, I think. Tell me, how does the voting go? How do they actually run it? So when you do your, your pitch at the beginning of the weekend, everybody goes up and they have 60 seconds to pitch. And the way that the product you've chosen is all your names are all around the room and everybody in the room just puts stickers on the product that they want to do and whoever has the most stickers wins. So you vote with your sticker. Oh, cool. That's it. So it's not the judge. That's kind of your, your it's like you, people stand back and watch how many stickers they're getting or do they stand there and call yeah, out for? Right, both. Both. Yep. Yeah, so one of the things I saw in core is don't go hang out in the back. Go out and keep, you know, keep showing you got the passion. So this is standard, and this is what I often go through, and this is the basis of most workshops I do, and we don't get to do that tonight. We're doing something a little more fun. <coughs> so as I said, I think most people who try to deliver this, it's pretty horrible, and it doesn't have passion. It's hard to understand. And yet, the VCs are, you know, they aren't, they aren't just bothered by that. So what do we really want to do? So we are going to try this. That makes sense. Do you volume? I'm going to pause it. You don't want to miss this. We need volume. Steve, what am I? Am I handheld? The pause. Let's do it. Help me out. Steve, we need volume. Let's do it. <laughs> do that. I'm, I'm working on this. Okay, so these are. Oh, shit. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Okay. So this is the material I carefully curated for you in order to, I hope, get your mind in a different place so that when you come up and you want to do a tech code or when you actually want to do any one minute thing, people will actually be impressed and will remember you as opposed to saying all the buzzwords. How are we doing? Yeah. 
little bit? You felt a little bit? It's over the top on purpose. Because, get this in your psyche of, they know more in Hollywood about passion than we do. And they know a lot more about getting people motivated and getting emotions flowing, and that is part of what a leader does. So you, I wouldn't say be Jim Carrey, but what I say is, you can have some of that in, those ingredients and that sense of passion that there's wrong in the world and we're going to fix it, or there's inconvenience, or people are suffering, or just bad stuff in general that life should be better, uh, that's going to make an impression and you will get the stickers, most more likely than not, assuming you're coherent. <laughs> Forget about the crowds, the size of the school, the fancy uniforms, and remember what got you here. Focus on the fundamentals. We've gone over time and time again. And most important, don't get caught up thinking about winning or losing this game. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. Okay? Okay. want to recruit for a real startup and you would want uh, team members for two years or more maybe working for nothing for six months or a year because of a passion to make a change in the world you could use some of this tools that's my that's all I'm saying I don't say go to Hollywood and be a movie star but I'm saying notice how the big boys do it and they do it pretty well okay So I showed you the standard pitch, you know, with the, with the really busy slide and uh, all of those points and so on. My suggestion for you is, is for the Startup Weekend, this is your model for pitching. I got something that's really cool. You know, it's available now. Come and join me. You know, I'm, it, it's hot. It's fresh. It's delicious. I know how to make it. We can, you know, so forth. So this is closer to what you need to do than the, you know, standard pitch. So here's the end of the trail. This is what I'm proposing of how a startup pitch ought to be. And you can see that a lot of this was in the, was in those slips. So you know it's it's kind of a propaganda thing to say, oh, we have an enemy or there's a bad guy. But sometimes we there is a bad guy, or sometimes it's just the stuff that the big corporations are making in a particular product area sort of sucks. Which, if you recall, somebody famous who's now dead was was fond of saying. So when, when Steve Jobs was introducing the iPhone, he talked about all the other devices and, and similar things like the, the uh, iPad, iPod. And when he described what was currently available in the market, it, it was a really short uh, summary. It sucked. So some things just plain suck. I think it's the parking here, which is uppermost in my mind, but you guys did better than I did. <laughs> We just came so this helps us motivate. What do you think of this? What do you think of this formula? You've had time to read through it, and I apologize for making you read on a slide. That's bad protocol. What do you think? Help me out with some comments. Because this is what I'm suggesting that you guys practice something along these lines. So basically, well, yeah. So you're Please. saying focus in the first pitch, you're a problem solution. You're saying just focus just on that. That's what you're saying. Yeah, it's sort of like, here's a problem. Um, see, we're the really bad guys in Lord of the Rings. There are a couple of yes. <laughs> The orbs, so the orbs are over there, and they're trying to take our land and, you know, devastate our fields and, and kill us all. What the hell are we going to do about it? I have a spear. Do you have a spear? Let's go get it. Perfect. <laughs> you can pitch first. Awesome. <laughs> now, this is my, my attempt to just sort of crystallize what happens in these things where we bang onto some emotion that people can identify with. We are then going to actually retreat a little bit from the emotion and give some logic and anecdotes and reasoning. So for my thing, for parking, I simply say, well, you know, it's frustrating. An event like this, oftentimes you're circling around for parking, you're stressed, you think I'm going to be late. You may be even thinking, well, let me ask you, you ever come to a place and realize, you know what, this is just more annoying than it's worth. I just, I should have stayed home. 
<coughs> because you can't park. Yeah, somebody. And then you get that connection and then, ha, well, you know, there's been a lot of cool innovation around transportation. So we have Uber now, which is based on a pretty novel idea. You know, you're going to get strangers with no sort of labeling on the car. They're not from a cab company. They don't have a, a medallion, all this stuff. But they're just kind of out there and they're going to pop up on your phone and you're going to get in the car and it'll take you where you want to go. Well, what if you could do the similar kind of app when you're coming up here and you say, yeah, I need to park at this tech code event. And there's some friendly person out there vetted through the internet. He says, oh, no problem, just stop here. Well, you go on in, I'll find a place for your car. You ping them five minutes uh, when, before you're ready to leave, and they bring your car back. It's called valet parking, but guess what? Valet parking is sort of the old taxi cab model. It's the stilted um, guys with the little vests and everything. So I believe we can do something better. And I'm really annoyed. I've been living in this alley a long time, and traffic is just getting worse. I'm looking for people to come on board and help me solve this problem because I've made a mock-up, and I've, I've actually come to events, and, and I've been in the car parker, and people eat it up. They love it. In fact, there's an opportunity. Uh, in some of the longer events, you can actually use their vehicle to, to create value. And people don't tend to buy them. So uh, my stickers are going to be over here. So that was my pitch, just to give you a flavor. And? What if that already exists? Hmm? That already exists. Our exit? That already exists in San Francisco. It does? Yeah. yeah. How sweet. Tell me about it. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm a genius. Mine. <laughs> stand up. Oh. What, what already exists? That's interesting. What's it called? I don't remember the name, but yeah. I have a good friend, and she works in San Francisco, and every time I go visit her, there is a car service that parks it in a local garage, uh -huh. and when we're done, brings the car back around so we don't have to find it. There already is a name for it. I, I love this thing. Name. I love we're going to be better than that. But it already exists. That's, that's so cool. So it's not down here. Yeah. But well, that's another benefit of going to, you know, uh, start a weekend. You learn that your idea has already been implemented. <laughs> but okay, that's So I thought of that on the way over here. So, hey, do it okay. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. <laughs> Very well. Shall we leave this up? What's next? This is just demo time. So I can say something about that slide for you. Please, go for it. So I've been pitching to investors for like 10 years, so the general philosophy, like you said, is that big 10-point thing, and the other piece of that philosophy is usually a high-level view. So they just want to, they don't really want to know the details, just the big level. Like the executive of the summary kind of? Right. So I tried to pitch for my 60-second one at the weekend that way, and it didn't work at all. Later, two days ago, later, when I was at breakfast, everybody said, you know, give me feedback on my pitch, I'm going to chosen. And it's because I gave the high-level view, and it was an example that they could relate to in their own lives. So what you're saying here is super relevant for that, you know. Yeah, whatever resonates for the people who are listening. Right. That, that they, because I think people get energized and say, this guy is onto something. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, that you'll never have enough time. In a minute, no one's going to really be able to vet your idea completely. But if they feel like you've got the passion and it's coherent and something they relate to, it's strong. So what did you learn about your pitch that it specifically that didn't go? So they suggested that I be more specific about how it was different from all the other apps that are out there, ah. and it had a real story behind it that they could relate to. Hmm. So I said the, the healthcare industry is $3 trillion, and it's killing our country. It's bankrupting us and killing us, which is the big overview picture, but hmm. it doesn't really mean anything to anybody on, yeah. on an individual right. level. What I should have said is my mom is dying from obesity and she has been obese for 70 years and nobody has fixed this fucking problem. I feel that. Doctors Do you folks don't, feel the difference? Doctors don't know how them? to make people not obese. They don't, yeah. That's not the business they're in. So we need to make an app yeah. that will help people who want to not be obese to, to be healthier. Yeah, so we got some pain. We got a kind of enemy that's taking all the resources and isn't solving these incredibly pressing problems that are chronic. And we got some passion. We got an idea about how to do it. Although the, the, we relied on the idea, but it's. I'm just giving the story. So, my idea is to. Uh, most other apps ask people what they ate. Our app tells people what to eat. So, if you don't know what to eat, asking you what you ate isn't going to help you. You need to give people guidance on what to eat mm. in order for them to you know, know what to eat that's actually healthy for them. Just asking them what to eat, which is what every app does. Which is good, because they have a target market. So Fitbit, MyFitnessPal, and all those people, they can serve like 10, 20 million people, but that's only the people that are already healthy. Yeah, so that's the yeah. 200 million people who don't know how to be healthy, 
you know, just asking them what they eat isn't going to solve the problem. Yeah, because that's that's more like a calorie counter versus a health promoter. So right. you, you need someone to guide. You need a guide. We need a guidance system, right? Yeah. Nice. So guys, you've heard you've heard the shtick that I brought tonight to help kind of liven you up and loosen you up and get you in the mood to consider a startup weekend or even just the kind of pitch that you would do when you meet someone in a coffee shop or at a, at a networking meeting and you're not the speaker, you don't have all the time like I, I get to have, and they're asking you in 60 seconds, so what's it about? You know, you're, oh, you're working on an idea, what do you got? And instead of giving them this elevator pitch laden with buzzwords that you think is sort of going to touch all that, you know, the IoT and, uh, and big data and Load. handheld and the mobile and all that crap that, turns, that puts people to sleep, you go with, hey, my mom is freaking dying. And the resources, we have incredible resources being flowing out, uh, and yet millions of people like her aren't being helped. What the hell? Let's do something. Different. Thanks for uh, helping develop this contrast. This is really what I'm going for with this whole evening is, is to kind of give you guys a bump and a shove toward the end of the edge of the plane so you can jump out and have a nice ride down and see, a, see a different, the world differently. Who wants to come up and try this thing? Or try whatever you want to do for one minute. Thank and we'll you. offer you feedback. If you're a founder, use this as practice. You yeah. Have to tear your this is how you get the sort of the gut check or the peer feedback or really just the experience of after surviving it. You're going, oh, that wasn't so bad. Do it. Okay. Are you going to pitch? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, my, my daughter was going to have a trip before she got married. And, and she spent hours and hours on the internet. She couldn't find a place where she want to go, where she want to go, and the amount of money that she spent. So she came up with this idea that she want to individualize a trip for each person. So she came up with this website that she will connect each person what you want, and automatically it will pop up in front of you what are all those choices. And and that's her company. It's called Traffic. Mm. Oh, nice. uh, well, it's, <laughs> it's above average. Thanks for thanks for doing that. <laughs> so we have probably, if you've been around the valley a lot, you've heard of uh, travel facilitation or trip sort of designer sites. So it's like another take on that, and maybe it's going to be the winner. You know? We didn't hear any differentiation. But thanks for getting us started, Evelyn. That was quite okay, and we're sorry for the incredible drama with the mic. We couldn't do that if we planned it, but. So now we did it. Oh my God. Hey, John Fargo. Uh, well, I've seen you in action already. Well, I want to practice. How are you going to you're gonna boost the energy? Try to practice something that we didn't talk about, which All right. is body language. Get up here, Tom. So, Get up here. One thing that I've been listening to in some podcasts is that body language is just as important as what comes out of your mouth. Um, one thing that I didn't even think of when I was doing my first sort of spiel is that I wasn't thinking about what I was doing with my hands and what I was sort of showing with, with my body, because that is equally as important as what's coming out of my mouth. Um, and so I just want to do a quick pitch on something that I was thinking about a couple months ago that um, is not sort of my current momentum, but uh, I invite any of you, uh, you know, you guys are hardware engineers to figure, to figure this out for me and kind of go do it, because I think it's a cool idea. So here's the pitch. One minute, right? 60 yep. seconds? Yep. All right. So one thing that I hate hate hearing when I'm living in San Francisco is people complaining about the homeless. This is a, everyone knows someone or remembers a situation where they have heard someone in their car or while walking by just complain about why there's so many homeless people in San Francisco. And it's, especially for people who are from, not from the U.S. Um, and so I just think that, um, there's this, there's this real, there's this big problem. I think it's an elephant in the room that no one wants to address. And I think that with, um, I think that what's really cool about the Internet of Things is that it can give even the cheapest piece of hardware the power of connectivity. So even something that costs a dollar, you can have it be connected to the network. And so if homeless can't afford phones, they can't afford computers or anything, which for us has helped our lives immensely. How can we, how can we help them with the same level of connectivity? Maybe you can give them something that's worth a dollar that can connect to people's phones um, through some sort of a IoT connection and help them out through some way. I don't know. Okay, then. Effective all that was uh, 75 seconds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you don't get to run away. Uh, I let Evelyn go because she's so sweet, but you're a tough guy. 
<laughs> so the body language thing is important, and you can overdo it. You can you can scale it to the size of the room. You know, you're sitting at a table, you can do this, or you know. um, but there's something that I want to point out to you. Because part of your body language is what happens with your eyes. So you were finding your material down here. You were looking down here a lot. So you can, when you see the video, you'll know exactly what I'm in. Did you oh, notice video. that? I, I didn't sign <laughs> So I noticed it was 25 seconds on the problem. I noticed you looking at your watch. And then, like, dang right I was. Good job. That's why I get the big money. And you, um, you made this incredibly puzzling or startling transition between uh, the problem with the homeless, and everyone complains about them, and why are, why are we doing something, and gee, this is chronic, and blah, 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 and this is a bad problem for 25 seconds, and then you said, but IoT. So, we need a really crisp, did anyone have trouble understanding the, the movie clips about what was at stake? Nah. Or why, you know, the team needed to concentrate on the fundamentals, and all that stuff, it was all just sort of went straight in. So, you, simplification. Yeah. Remember, sell popcorn. So, uh, so you this could. Is an unplanned pitch. So I just do this. I get people in front of the room. I mess with them. This is this is something I do. Uh, it would be. We know the chronic problem with homelessness, not only in, in San Francisco, but around the valley, around the USA. It's especially visible in San Francisco. But I've recently come on an insight, and that is, many of those people are capable of doing productive things and uh, getting off the streets and having a much higher quality of life if they could just get connectivity to find resources. And they can't afford cell phones that we all are lucky enough to have. But I believe there's an IoT-based solution to solve that. And I believe we can make a significant dent in this problem if we move ahead with a, a simple set of IoT technologies that goes outreach to these folks and for the ones who can use it, um, helps them get ahead and helps them get off the streets and have a quality of life we all feel better about. <laughs> so the reason I can do that is because not because I'm super smart about it, it's simply that I've developed the habit of simplifying, and that's just a little secret. Yeah, I think it, the more and more you kind of start thinking about an idea that you want to pitch, the more in the weeds you are, and it's, it's tough to just get yourself back up to that view of, Talk about what's important. I think you should take a feedback from other person who is, who is in your team, and I think he or she can pull you up from the weeds. I mean, Roy just listened to yeah, this, exactly. to yeah. this whatever you call it, what I did up yeah. there, and he was able to extract what was meaningful and right. present it in a very clear and concise way. And like that's what everyone needs help with when they've been thinking about something for exactly. a long time. Yeah, is the soundboard? I think. So that was helpful. Thank you. Appreciate that. And, and whether there's a coach in the front or not, even just doing it and getting feedback, you will sort of percolate through and you'll be able to make an improvement incremental. So we've had two very brave people. Is there anyone else? Sir? Just, well, I just want to ask you a question. You yeah. mentioned body language, but I imagine that's very dependent on culture, and this is a very multicultural area. So how are you going to be in a group of multicultural potential investors going to adopt the appropriate body. A, a good question. I tend to, I, I have a chauvinistic attitude, meaning uh, I believe that you know, we have, this is Rome for the startup world, and I think we're okay doing what is native to Rome, and I don't believe we need to apologize for it. However, we want to be sensitive. If someone else it is in their repertoire to do things, we shouldn't dismiss them. But I would encourage you, and you look like you're pretty native, yeah, reasonably. <laughs> yeah, this country or Northern Europe. Yeah. So I would encourage you, you know, this is your cultural heritage, to be able to do this, and I would I would not have a sense of wanting to live it. Okay. Yeah, make it. Thank you, make it. Other questions, or who wants to come? Uh, uh, actually, we would like to have... She yeah. is so oh, really yeah. charming, we must have this woman. <laughs> yes, come on up. <laughs> problems with technology. Yeah, problems. It's to do with our brains. We are forgetting a lot of things. We're forgetting the names of streets, how to go to places, but we're also forgetting the names of people. And for, until now, there's not really a lot of solutions to do with how to find those people when we're approaching. I mean, 
Right now you have a name tag, right? But what's my name? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what can we do about it? Well, Google Glasses is coming up. And what an amazing app would it be if you can have face recognition in Google Glasses that will both do two, two things. One, will help you remember names that you need to remember. But two, it will train your brain to remember them next time. So we are not fully, um, fully um, reliant on the technology, but also we will know next time how to learn the names. Oh, Thank great. you. Yeah. Thank you. So Google Glass already came and went in my mind. Mm -hmm. So you said it's coming up. So the new version. The new. Oh, the yeah. new. Okay, okay. I did not know. So yeah. it has to be something that is going to be more consumer friendly because right now I don't think Google Glass is something that people are going to adopt. Still, I still think it works in professional levels, but as an everyday, you know, it, that's, a, that's a challenge. So we have skepticism. Okay. <laughs> who else would have who else would reply to this pitch? Yeah, I think there are other um, I think you could even extend because I think there are a lot of things that technology hampers um, in our daily lives. Like we forget all sorts of things, not just who we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So there's something there as far as using technology to get away from technology if that's kind of what you're what you're explaining. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like it, yeah. I think you presented it well and very clear. Yeah, I thought it was good because you focused on one thing that I could relate to, and while what you said is true, Tom, that you could expand it, in my own mind I could expand it to things, I didn't really need you to tell me that, but you focused on something that I could relate to, so I was engaged, yeah. Yeah, just a quick note, uh, you mentioned the problem and you also gave the solution, but uh, I won't focus on only on, like, on one solution uh, presented, but uh, I would say, like, for instance, we can use a Google Glass because there are other technologies that you, you can rely on. Uh, for instance, a prox proximity uh, sensor with uh, phones. So yeah. everybody in this room. We're actually like, thinking one. of uh, all of those technologies. Right, right. right yeah. What will work more just right. Right. Uh, Can you disclose? Are you, do you work at Google? No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I'm an MBA student, and That's we're it. trying to figure out uh, cool. our next startup. <laughs> Oh, so let me explain how my experience was. That, like most people, uh, the problem of remembering names is really stressful, mm -hmm. and it we, we helps causes us to doubt our confidence and our social. Uh, we we kind of shrink socially when we think, oh, I should know his name or her name. So it it, it really cuts. And I was totally with you, and I was, I was expecting that it would be some more uh, universally available, more uh, democratized kind of technology that something I could maybe plug into my phone, like a like a square or something that would somehow uh, give, me a, give me a crutch, but the wonderful thing, of course, the crutch that I could eventually leave behind. Mm -hmm. So for me, when you went to Google Glass, it was like, oh, this is pie in the sky, and I'm never going to have a Google Glass. So what was your purpose in connecting those those things? Do you want to um, an app for Google Glass? Or? No. Uh, well, right now we ran some te technologies in our heads and trying to figure out what is the best technology to make it seamless and augmented reality through glasses, if it's Google and otherwise, seems like the better choice. So that's why... Better than? Better than uh, phones and device to device, which is less um, seamless, uh, or sound recognition, which you have less um, library in than photo recognition, because that you can search. So what would you say, just to kind of get us back on the track, for, if you were mm -hmm. going to do a startup weekend, Mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't know as much about this as you know, but you know you wanted to solve it. Maybe you thought of Google Glass, but you weren't sure. What would your call to action be for your team? What would you say to them? Why should they join up with you? Yeah, well, man. Or what do you what do you have to offer? I'm not sure. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what what the uh, rally and cry? Okay. Well, let's go slay the dragon. So the okay. dragon is this is this uh, awkward and uh, really hurts our chances in life in many ways, okay. and maybe even chances in romance. I can't remember names. Some people really suffer from it. So the rallying cry has something that has to do with solving that and getting the orcs back in the ground where they belong. So if What's you, your rallying cry? So if you feel this is a problem that you want to solve, you should join me because together we can help millions of people like us. Is that something? No more suffering. <laughs> <laughs>
you know, <laughs> when you meet a, a new person, they will they will remember you and love you if you remember their name and use it. Okay. That's absolutely right. Thank you so much. Simple problems. Yes, sir, please. So you didn't ask her to quantify the dollar value of that solution or that problem. Is that part of that we want to leave out? I, I think you leave it out in Startup Weekend, do you not? Well, I have my opinion. I want your opinion. My, um, my opinion is you can leave it out if it's obvious that it's a, it's a compelling problem that if you, if you create an efficient solution, there will be some kind of market. So I think that's what most people need. But if you have the statistics at your fingertips to quantify, and maybe it's a market that's a little more esoteric, Sure. Sure, we want to know we're going to build something that people will value. Would that, would that be fair? What would you think? Well, what I was saying is that I think if you stick with the heart and leave out the numbers because the numbers engage your brain, then you have a better chance. Yes, numbers ordinarily put us in a cognitive frame where the emotion tends to drain out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I didn't get the criticism of my presentation. You didn't? <laughs> 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 You're 100%. Yeah, so I, 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 I criticized your answer walking away because I said travel facilitation, we've heard different ones. Maybe like to offer some, offer some feedback on her daughter's idea, please. Um, the challenge I hear is the AI needed to match my interest and budget automatically. You see, I mean, right now what you're describing can be done, but it still involves, unless I'm wrong, a lot of manual labor. And I've already solved her problem. Don't get married. So I will share my, getting, so my, my feedback, please. She was getting married, right? <laughs> yes, and she, she wanted to go on a trip with her son before the wedding. Yeah, and then she couldn't. She couldn't so if she do doesn't get married, like he said, yeah. then she can go on all the trips she wants with her son. Yeah, well, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She's saying get married. I'm saying don't get married. You want to keep so, well, so I think so. Um, so it is stressful to plan trips, and I was like at the look five trying to make sure I'm booking the correct date because it's, I'm just terrified that I'm going to book the wrong week and then that. However, what I'd like to hear in, in this kind of pitch, and I've heard these kinds before, is that you have some secret sauce or some insight, not necessarily super AI but some pattern of behavior or some pattern of preference or some way of interfacing to, to streamline it and make it superior and give a better user experience. So people will book this and they'll have the trip in their life. It'll be less stressful and it'll save them money. But we need, we need, I think, would you would folk agree, we would want to hear something differentiated. Right? Because many people can do kinds of pattern matching and make, make lists of possibilities. Google is good at that. And I'm sure Expedia and people like that are you know, working very hard to make this kind of company impossible. So we want to hear some pretty brave, inspired. It, what are your qualifications of your daughter to do this? Is she a computer science major? Uh, she has a team. Oh. <laughs> okay. So in the old style thing, that's called traction. That's called excuse me. It's called a headline. So she has a team. How big is this team? Holy cow! Mm -hmm. See what's coming out here? This is why. Always put your headlines first. That's amazing. So, they have a product in the field that's being used? Uh, it's going to be launched in a few days. Cool. But, but we're still looking for more help. <laughs> this could be, this could be the connection. <laughs> looking for, for more what? Years. Yeah, we, we're looking for eight hours of service of someone who knows Ruby on Rail to help us uh, set up the membership. Oh, technology. Uh, they, they need some, some, yeah, some software development for the yes, website. Yeah. So the, but the core team is already there. And they funded? Yeah. Uh, it's in a process. Yeah? In a process. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. And tell us the name and we'll... Traffic. Traffic. T-R-E-P-I-C. Traffic. Dot C-O. Sweet. Okay, talk to Evelyn. Maybe make opportunity. Yeah, good one, yeah. <laughs> so, there's got to be some more passion in this room. Yes, yeah, sir. Would you like to uh, take it around the block for us? Come on up. What's your name? Edmund. Edmund? Yes.
Well, let me meet you. Thanks for coming up. Uh, I'll just escort you over here and, and turn you loose. Oh, let me get my timer reset. Huh? One minute is a cruel discipline. So, Evan, <coughs> tell us what you got. Thanks. All right, guys, I'm Edmund. I'm a rocket scientist turned entrepreneur. I see problems everywhere, every day. So one of the problems I see is in the workspace. Life is short, yet we spend so much time working every day, and we are not working where we are really passionate, which is sad. And we always talk about passion, about pitching, but why we are not having that passion in the workspace? So I'm trying to bring more happiness to the workspace, to our world, by trying to match people and filter people based on the job, with their passion, using machine learning. Sweet, and that was 33 seconds. Well, well done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you, you had some more time, but that was fine. And you're, you're literally a rocket scientist. Yes. So <laughs> no, that was my bad. The rocket business is slow these days. Um, that sounds really interesting. So I was a rocket scientist. I do a lot in that area, but I can't go around the law. That's one thing that's very hard to change. The laws? Yes. Oh, see, so there's like uh, security restrictions from, based on where you're from? And yes. You can't get the yes. work you'd like to get. And it's not even about the secret. I already know their secret. We just can't hire people based on the law. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going to come out. That's interesting. Uh, so, core idea. Did you get the core idea? We're going to match people's passion with the actual work opportunities? That was, I don't know if I've heard it expressed that in such a crystallized way. Give this gentleman some feedback. That was nice that he, what he did in 32 seconds. What more would you want to hear? Well, how, yeah. how do you I'll find out people's real passion? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. the technical part. So, a few years ago it's going to be hard, but now we have so much data out there online. We have a digi digital footprint. So I'm going to use machine learning to actually learn what your real passion is, rather than you telling us. Because telling us those questionnaires, sometimes you don't even know yourself. Are you this or are you that? You know? and every day is different, and personality test, depending on how good the PhD, whatever psychologist comes up with, there's also a question of. So this is a job search, or, or a, it's an employer-employee matching service? Yeah, it's so like a dating service for employees? So in a way, it's like a tool for you to filter for people who are really passionate about yeah. job. So people <laughs> match based on the passion, rather than just... So, so, so okay, Cupid for business? I don't know, sounds good. My question would be, um, the market dictates what jobs are available and what quantities, and then you're trying to match people's desires to fit into that, and it's like putting a, a square peg no, into a... No, it's sort of filter. Let's say you have all these job candidates. Which one? Now, companies are having a problem is to retain the right candidates. In fact, there's a tech talk. If you hire somebody with the right skill to do the job, they work for the salary. But if you hire somebody with a passion and what your, your vision is, they work for their blood, sweat, and tears for you. And those are the people that actually is going to grow. But I'm business. saying the market will say there's a hundred jobs in a particular area. Maybe there's a thousand people that have a passion for that job. So how are you going to resolve that? So, so this, like I told you, is a filter. So it's a second stage filter after you find those people with the skills, the technical skills. But not everybody is really interested in that job. They just want the job for the money or what. You know, you're trying to build out the real passionate people. So people are matched based on what they really love. And if the company goes down, they're still passionate. Exactly. So to finish this, yeah. as if we were doing a startup weekend thing, yeah. uh, what sort of team members do you want? You want to build this thing, right? Yes. So I thought of, I mean, be becoming a, being an engineer in, a, in a rocket science itself, you, you, sometimes you think that maybe I can just learn this from scratch and do it myself. So that's one thing I heard that you should not do. So I'm trying to find a machine learning data science guy to accelerate the process okay. rather than trying to do it from scratch. So okay. a machine learning data science. And what's the end product going to be? Because we have two and a half days here at Startup Weekend. What are you trying to build in two and a half days? Are these folks want to, does somebody might want to join you? No. I'm trying to build that platform. The platform? Yep. Okay. To match it. And what's the name of it? So currently I have it called same page. We are thinking on the same page. Same page? Yes. Or same pitch. Same page. Page. Same thinking page. on the same page. How about passion page? Or how about passion match? You're <laughs> working on the name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the end result is more important. The name is just like I want to bring more happiness to what is the real problem here. Yeah. Okay. We're we're happy. All right. Any last comments for Edmund? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As a general question for all these kinds of startups, uh, I hear startups 
constantly uh, promoting ideas. And one of the issues that I always, one of my primary filters is both practicality and, um, and opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as the other gentleman here was questioning about the, the problem with the employment marketplace, it's not a matter of can't find passion, it's can't find a job. So uh, there's, you know, a hundred people for every one job. And yeah, the, from the employer perspective, you want to pick the best. So that puts the power, the comparative power of the um, economic model into, onto the employer side, who you might be charging for this kind of capability. But from a practicality point of view, you know, I would dismiss it <coughs> immediately for that reason. And I'm wondering about, in this environment that we're talking about right now, uh, how important is uh, having a practical solution well, so, yeah, so, underneath yeah. the passion? I think people have, and, and, oh, we're getting some feedback here, that's perfect. Thank you for raising this, because it's a pretty important thing. And I get in a lot of conversations, you know, just a coffee kind of meeting with entrepreneurs, and I hear, especially even ideas about, uh, matching employees and so on and how to refer your friends or what other kind of scheme and I go, yeah, but this, you know, this is a, this is such a busy market. It's so confused and dynamic and there's such a mismatch on both sides, you know, the hires versus the, the mm -hmm. seekers. But what I've been, what I think I've become more aware of is it's such a diverse market with different uh, layers, different tiers and so forth. And it's so huge and so international that there might be an ecosystem or, or a set of, uh, uh, parts of the system where he could thrive. I don't rule it out. Even though fundamentally we want to say, well, there's just 100 people chasing every position, maybe not necessarily, because it's a huge, huge ocean of, of transactions going on. Who, well, who else wants to weigh in on this one? I'm curious. We can discuss it. Well, the this thing is, is, the positive side is that if you, if you take the position of, from the employer's point yeah. of view, there's a value. Because from the employer's point of view, you're now finding people who are passionate about your concept, yeah. and that could, that would mi mix into your uh, so how is it you, how is it you you consider that not practical? I didn't see that switch. Hmm. It was from the employer's employee side entirely, and the first thing uh. that I would do with uh, it's discussing a topic like this with them is saying where are the economic values in the proposition, mm -hmm. and the idea of making a match is a good idea. The question is, how do you make it a practical match? And so you I, would, take the, I would in raise terms that of what's issue. practical? The market knows, and I, I don't have enough experience, you know, I'm not a veteran of the job search market to know what the market would say. Yeah. Can I, can please, I please, off yeah. on what you said? And, um, the problem was really clear, uh, as you said, for the uh, for the uh, person who's looking for the job. However, we switched it and we all realized that it's going to be for the corporates. And therefore, if it's a product that we're, we're uh, supplying for the uh, job um, su suppliers or the corporates, then we need to solve their problem and present the problem from their eyes and not from the job. Yeah, and, and, and personally, so I would share that, well, maybe I'm less enthusiastic because I think employers have too much power already. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that definitely hit me as, a, as, a, as an emotional chunk. Yeah, what do you think, David? So I don't know if you're an investor or not, but just to let you know how the startup weekend works is there's two pitches like we talked about. So the first one is just to get other your peers passionate about it. It's not really to analyze whether it's a practical idea or any of that stuff. You just to get your peers on board. And then the pitch at the end is more for that, where you have investors and experienced business people betting whether it's practical or, or how big the market is and that kind of stuff. So that's the pitch at the end of the weekend. So right now we're just talking about the first pitch about emotion, and then the pitch at the end of the weekend is all so, about practical. So if that's the case, then I would suggest that one of the people that you definitely want to try to bring on board your team is someone who's got true business development and marketing experience right. who is going to be able to look at your your principal concept and create an economic framework that is going to make it a practical concept. Indeed. And let the, mad, that will, the madness will begin and we'll, you'll see how well you can work on a team. So Another, we don't want to have the conversation, but one yeah. more thing, just how they do that at the start of weekends is they say the first question you have to answer is, is, is there a valid market? And the way they make you answer it is by actually going out and talking to end user customers and finding out 
if they have a problem so, that you're trying to solve. So this is like phone calls you're making on Saturday morning? Yeah, yeah it's like that. because it's on the weekend. So yeah. Like, yeah. It's hard on the weekend to do the B2B stuff. Yeah. So a lot of B2C stuff, you can interview the other people at the weekend yeah. or other people that you know, but the B2B stuff is harder. Cool. Thank so you what we for, did is yeah. we did in one weekend an AdWords campaign where we just focused on getting the end users, which that wasn't who was going to pay us. The companies were going to pay us, but that's who we could access over the course of the weekend. Cool. But, you know, it gave you some information that was probably, you know, partial validity at least. Right. It was useful. Sir, you had a comment. It was a little bit about what you just said, um, you know, that the biz dev side is something that it's hard to get, I think, in these startup weekends, right? Because this is mostly technology, mostly tech people. Uh, I thought your idea was very clear. Um, and I, you know, when I listen to the pitches, I'm less thinking less from what you're talking about, less about the idea and more about are you getting the message across in a clear, concise way, which I think you've, you've treated. I think your idea is great, though, because I think it's not just the corporate market that pays for it, but what's the value in finding, letting somebody take like a personality test almost, right? It's like e-harmony, right? So you're yeah. really challenging yourself to say, what is it I really want? I need to unlock that. And you know, people get paid to do that all the time. And, and you might discover job opportunities for which you're actually better suited than you realized, and you, it would help you to consider. You'd be happier in, in your in you, Exactly, and I think yeah. that, no, no, so. that's a service I would pay for. Yeah, right, exactly. So, okay. you know, I think there's, there's a corporate side to that opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's a personal side, you know, consumer side to that. So, yeah, I think it's just about, uh, but, I, but I got that from your pitch. And as a rocket scientist, we're honored that you're <laughs> down here playing with us. I want to introduce a friend of mine, Steve. Steve, we sat through something similar to this, or in a related field just last night with List Entrepreneur. So I want to just kind of, uh, when you hear these short pitches, and you, you work with uh, Plug and Play and, and Founders Institute, so you hear a lot of early ideas. How do you weigh this kind of, kind of this discussion about can it be practical? Can you really know? Well, the intent is a tad bit different. So it doesn't exactly match this format, but you're trying to see if the concept is clear enough to understand if there's a market, and then if there's a market, if there's a clear enough differentiation to matter. So for example, to Edmund's pitch, you could see there was passion in it, you could see it's differentiated, and you could understand a customer base, so that makes it compelling. In a lot of pitches, you don't get that. You get sort of a pie-in-the-sky component, a free-floating desire. Like build it and enable come? sort of engineering based, mm -hmm. not consumer based. And you want all these to be based on your own frustration, your own inner angst. And then you have a product because you have a customer of one. And if you have a customer of one, you probably have a customer of thousands because none of us are truly unique. And in what Edmund, I think, was saying was we all desire to find our passion. If there's the eon harmony of employment services, cool, I'd sign up for that. And I know I would, well, I'm unemployable because I'm an entrepreneur, but anyway, I would if I were in that market. So again, when you pitch, pitch something that has purpose for your audience. Here, the difficulty, I think, is that there isn't a clear purpose to pitch. Mm -hmm. Those of us who don't know the startup weekend cycle can't speak from the heart as to what's necessary. Those of us who sit and try and find businesses that are fundable see something different. Would I be the customer? Am I excited by it? Do I want to buy you're it? Saying, you're saying VCs and angels use mental shortcuts? Uh, they were so. Yeah. yeah. The desire is to not be bored and to not hear the absurdity of the typical pitch. That's all. And it's weird. If you see a Nest uh, thermostat or if you see a Tesla, you don't have to really get a pitch. You just have to get a vision materialized as a product and then you want to buy it. The ultimate purpose of a pitch is to simply show crisply what it is that you're doing. That's all. So we've, had, so we've seen some good work here. Would you not agree? Yeah. yeah. Hey, he's from Founders Institute. So, so for my part, he's a mentor by folks. So if, if you saw Animal House, or if you didn't see Animal House, what you may not know is you saw Bluto. That was the. Um, oh, I have no idea. Who's the dead guy? Belushi. <laughs> John Belushi. John Belushi. Not Belushi. One of the Belushi's. So he didn't know that they were going to go convert the the Cadillac into or whatever it was uh, into a uh, tank. So we don't know exactly what the shape of this passion matching thing will be, but we can sense the, the, the attraction of it. Yeah. So. In other words, speak from your heart. 
it, there's a very simple notion that innovation is really just frustration monetized. That's all. There's no complexity behind this. People build layers and layers of complexity upon a process that's intrinsically incredibly simple. So the question is, thank you very much, Steve. My pleasure. Okay, okay that's that saying, sit down. Stop talking. Super smart. He <laughs> spins, you know the lotto machine with the little, you know, the, or the uh, bingo machine with all the, the little ping pong balls bouncing around? He does that for business models. <laughs> if you need to sort out a business model on financing, yeah. man, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Oh, well, you're brilliant at it. Uh, so what I'd like to get back to is who else has some passion that they're sitting on and want to come up here and do it? Sir, please. Blood. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Let's start. Reset. Okay, so I was, I was asking, with a question for audience. How many of you work for a business? How many? Almost everybody, yeah. And how many of you deal with bad customers' feedback? So you're usually pissed off by this, I know, I know. And what are you doing when you are pissed off by, for example, bad service or something like in a restaurant or by your internet provider? You're usually posting it on the internet and Twitter, Facebook, Yelp, everywhere on the internet so everybody will know about it. And basically what I'm trying to do in my company, we're helping businesses to solve this problem. We're building a tool for customer support that connects business and customers. We can help you find all the data about your customers, where are they complaining, what are they are talking, and deal with it. Connect your customers, provide them help, uh, help them solve their problems, and bring peace and love to everybody. <laughs> peace and love. <laughs> So it's a problem we could pretty easily identify we realize happens and it's, and it's very serious. Like who's saying what about us and is it fair and how do we help it? Would you potentially work with him? Would he, would he move you enough to say, okay, I want to sign on, let's build this. And, and if not, what would what stop it yet? So he could really use this feedback. I think there are companies out there who's doing it. So what yes. companies? I, I have talked to, I don't know the name, I don't remember the name, but that company is really doing well. Uh, so what they do is that, this company, I mean, I've, XYZ, is, I don't know the name, I don't remember the name. What they do is that they take data from all the hotels and all these, you know, end clients. And what they do is they do all the big data calculations and all this stuff about the feedback and give it to the providers, right, who's serving them. What they do, yeah, yeah I, I did a lot of research about competitors, about similar tools. What they do, they just do sentiment analysis based on this data. So they're just giving you the data, the analytics, and what are you going to do with this? Who knows? What? No, no, no. This is, no, no, no. They take a feedback too. Yeah. So this is a feedback from the customers. They take that. So and they allow. They don't have emotions at they all. They allow yeah. the people from the company talk to their customers. Yeah. Using all this. Yeah. And how how they do it. So, so they have a process okay, which I'm go no, 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 I don't know. I don't know the whole process. Yeah, afterwards, but I don't know the whole process. But there is a process. There's a company down there. That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. I can give it so the name. competition, it's always a risk in pitching. Oh, you missed a competitor. And I thought he did a pretty good recovery. Yeah, okay, so you yeah. contradicted him and said they did. But, yeah. Um, I mean, he's, 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 he's assuming something which I said, no, it's true, not true, because it's, there is a data thing, there's a, which I, I actually so spent some time. So what could this, that kind of objection would have been something special of the, your method of doing it? Maybe you have studied and you know that the basic methods that people are using and you're going to make it more effective? Yes. Well, I've studied a lot of like competitors and similar tools in this area. So basically we combine customer support dashboard and the data grabbing with sentiment analysis. So we allow customer support people to talk to their customers everywhere and analyze them. I think nobody is doing this. You don't think way. anyone is integrated as much as you think they're going to be integrated? No, because I did a lot of research and I haven't found anybody to do this. No, nobody. <laughs> More feedback for that. So, uh, how, how, how different is your product from Medallia? I mean, they take customer feedback. From, from what? Medallia. Medallia, yeah. What they what they do? Uh, they take customer feedbacks and provide them uh, with insights, like he was talking about, like to the. So yes, I'm going to call time out on, on this yeah, yeah. trial here because what we've entered, in, you've wandered into an area that people are very interested in and pretty well informed. So that in and of itself is probably good. Um, but if you really want to rally the troops, you're going to need to up the emphasis on what you think is your unique insight or your unique positioning or technology or whatever it is that 
shines above all of these current efforts. Mm -hmm. So that's your that's your growth area. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Well, I'll try it. Why not? Yeah. Okay. So there are a few prof professionals that we as consumers have to deal with. And in addition, we can't stand them. Um, I'm, of course, talking about lawyers, telemarketers, uh, car salesmen, and of course, contractors, right? And what do, what, do, what do they all have in common? They give us an illness. I call it FOGRO, fear of getting ripped off, right? So what do we need? Multiple bids. But this could take weeks. Talking to multiple people, getting multiple bids, we need to do it in hopefully about hours, minutes if we can. So we need to be able to <clears throat> find people who can get this done in a matter of hours, get you the information, get rid of your fears, and we can get it done in you know, hopefully in less than a day. So what I need is I need people like developers, data scientists to help me solve this problem. Who's coming with me? <laughs> <laughs> Q and A, huh? So um, <clears throat> I heard I heard problem was pretty serious. Uh, be careful about mentioning all these different categories because <laughs> if you looked at uh, all the people in the room and, and mapped out if they know someone in that category that they like, oh, yeah. you can do a So mm -hmm. I, I hang out with a, a fellow player on the soccer team who's a contractor, and the guy's as smooth as can be. So just be a little careful there. Yeah, definitely. Hey, definitely. Hey, strong word. I mean, my brother's a contractor, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> he might not have liked that speech, but <laughs> so, so what we I think this is, this is a, a bid to build a system for lightning fast quotes, competitive yes. quotes on a particular job. Yes. And so a little hard to think about because lawyers and contractors are very different activities and very different ways of thinking about the business. Okay. So that would, I would suggest if you can pick one or two at the most okay. categories. Cool. Yeah. That would have, that would save you a lot of work. You would be, Make more traction. Oh, what do we think? Definitely. Help them out. I have a question for you. Yeah. Is it important to show your benefit in it? Because it's not about the idea. It's about being able to execute a part of the idea and having other people help you execute. So, you know, for like the rocket scientist, maybe the fact that he's a rocket scientist, like, oh, I'm going to follow him because That's he so also knows me. Yeah. what else. You know, he knows yeah. he needs a data scientist to do this and this yeah. and this. I didn't really get the value add of him as a person. But I don't know how important that is to say, I can do this part, and I need you to do this part, and we're going to solve this problem. Uh, at least, thank you. I okay. think it's a really, it could be incredibly important, uh, especially when you're meeting strangers and they have so little time. So we want to know. So we know Vlad did research. Uh, I think we got a sense he was thoughtful about it. Maybe um, uh, you know, he got a, got a gut feeling for how serious the problem is. He communicated that. Uh, it's no, no, no way, no way. So yeah. no way. Uh, you were active, and he, he had the body language, and you had the gestures, and you're like, oh, I feel yeah. like he knows about this uh, pain or uncertainty or doing yeah. business with these, where, you, where you're blind, you're not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we didn't hear any kind of even mini vignette of why it interests you or what kind of insight you have. So if your brother is a contractor uh, or a lawyer, and you've seen what goes on, I've seen what goes on behind closed doors or, mm -hmm. or in the back of the industry or in the office, and believe me, you don't want to know. But we don't have to put up with that anymore. So we would know you had a personal connection. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I've done I've done construction work with my brother. Um, you know, made me do all the labor, and I've seen him close deals. And some of the deals he's done is pretty disgusting. But <laughs> but you know, that's how he makes his money. He makes friends with people. He makes them feel comfortable. And you're like, oh no, you know, we're gonna get it done right. You have union people working for you, but he gets people. So the better you feel just people. before the deal, the more yeah. you get ripped off. And the second, the second you sign the deal, you're like, okay, but I need to get multiple bids, and he kind of finds a way around that, you know, because who wants to spend weeks, you know, getting multiple bids and you know talking to your spouse about it and trying to come up. So here's a, here's a formula in case anyone else noticed this contradiction that he has or this difficulty because. Um, you don't want to be mean to these tradespeople because everyone's had a positive experience with some of them in some categories and with their real people, with the families and so forth. So what you do is you bring them along with you. <coughs> so rhetorically, you're saying, and there are a lot of contractors and lawyers and other kinds of service providers who, who do these pretty um, 
do this heterogeneous business, you know, and each, each deal is a little different. And they are also frustrated because they don't have a system to interface and efficiently describe and quantify the work and give a, give a <laughs> high reliability estimate. So we are bringing the consumers and the professionals, the forward-looking professionals, together yeah. with the system. So you yes. bring them with you. Exactly. Fair? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. Okay. More yeah. comments? Sorry. If anybody has any thoughts, feel free. <laughs> And even if you only know three lawyers in the country who want to go with you, you're still bringing something. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, sadly, the idea already exists. Yeah. And I was already heartbroken about that. But uh, oh. That was my first like startup moment. I was like, I really planned everything out, like, pretty much bit by bit. And when I found out the company already existed, it's almost like they traveled in the future to steal my idea and they came back in time. So they started that before I did. Uh, That's how it felt. Like, you know what they say? <laughs> ed, ed, execution is everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If only I was here two years did earlier. You have a so, how many companies make cards? How many companies 20, make cards? 20, 40, 50? There's going to be competition. The fact that there's competition validates the market. That's a good thing. Yes. You want to go to an investor and say, nobody else is doing what I'm doing, because then the investor says, well, it's not valuable. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, maybe they can do it better. But so, um, just to add on to that, to your point, at the weekends, I don't know if it was special for the weekend that I went to because it was out of college, but there was about 50% business people and 50% tech people. So, there was plenty of business people to go around to help with the financial part of it, too. But the sad thing is I feel like the tech sectors are maturing very quickly. Like we're already seeing all the you know, set up within like two or three years. You look at Uber and Lyft, you know, Sidecar was around for a little while, but not anymore. So it's, we're really getting to this point in business where if you have a startup idea, you could take over an industry in five years, whereas opposed to used to happen, you know, over decades. And I feel like that's also kind of something different that our generation has to deal with. Okay, so but hopefully, well, then, you so, know. So. We're going to get past this down note because I think there are different sectors behave in different ways. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. not everything is a land grab and not everything is a winner take all. Definitely, you definitely makes a good point to find, yeah. definitely find a way to differentiate yeah. it. And, and, and very, very often, you're going to be more appealing if you're specialized so that you do a better job in some small area and yeah. then you know you become a winner and you get starting to get name recognition and then you carry your technology elsewhere. Mm -hmm. so a very common strategy. Yeah, okay. So we want to know your sweet spot. So, you know, not four different ones. Okay. But one specific one that's <coughs> Okay. So, um, I mean, within my whole deal. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, for an example, you know, Angie's List started off with a single category uh, and does essentially what you're talking about. Yeah. And then they, as they got more expertise in the process and the right. technology underneath it, they expanded their categories. Which I don't even know if they're actually profitable yet. Even though they're huge and the household name, I have no idea, but they're certainly but putting out enough advertising. Somebody made made a lot of money out of it, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, well, thank you. All right, thanks for the insight. Thank you very much. Thanks for being nice today. We are here closing down, and we can you know shout around more about Startup Weekend, or you guys can do network. Unless someone's there, it's like you hasn't got their hand up yet, but you want to do it. This person, you are going to be our last, sir. Come on up. <laughs> Tell us what you got and get some followers, okay? Okay. So, I've been to many classes, wanted to, to get whatever the speaker or the professor is speaking, but not distracted by writing down notes. I hate to write. And also, there is Siri and everything. I can't take my phone out and say, uh, take this th thing down. So, I wanted to make something seamless. I want to have all my notes taken very seamless. So all I have to say is just record last five minutes please and that's done. All uh, of the data in text form will be there in my notes ready to be referred. And even if I want something to be web search that's there on my notes. All I have to uh, tell is speak out, do the Google search or get more info on this and it's all done. So this is what I wanted to do. If anyone want to support me on this, please help us. Alright, you ask me for money? Well then. <laughs> 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 so, you know, we do know that note taking and learning and, and keeping up with events and whatnot it is frustrating and it splits your attention and it, it, it lowers your productivity and learning. What did we hear from him that sparked our interest? Because there's quite a bit in there that's pretty clear that we all want right off the top. Well, what do you say maybe that got your interest? 
Um, I'd like to point out that uh, I've had that kind of need or want in many business meetings. And especially if you're hard of hearing like I am, it becomes especially um, interesting. It's like, well, what did they actually say? Or I'd like to record the specific thing. So there are a number of recording app apps out, but not none that really do, as far as I know, that do the kind of thing that you're saying, which is have voice command to do the control and then also allow voice over for added notation. And that sounds like a great smartwatch application. Fair enough. Other comments? I'm thinking it's great for uh, you know the the uh, sharing economy of, of just people out there who have the verbal intelligence of the time and they're in their house for whatever reason and they sign on and get magically connected with anyone who, who has an audio track. They use automated uh, uh, voice to text. Oh yeah. They fix it up That'd and they great. add annotations and they send it back. You know, turn it around in 20 minutes. You know, there yeah. are trans. Uh, uh, transcription services, that's an old, cynical that. thing, so I'm sure there are updated versions. Yeah, you use uh, uh, AWS Mechanical Turk. So uh, how can he boost this up? I mean, if he's serious, is this really, maybe in, a, in six months he says, I still hate this thing, I still need help. How can he boost up this pitch? Well, I, I would say the one problem with that is understanding it, the voice recognition. So if you had some idea or some insight into how you could actually understand voices because everyone's got an accent. I'm from the other side of the country, but people think I'm from the Midwest. Of course, people are from other countries. So that would be the main thing for me. It's a great idea, and I have to take notes all the time in this notebook, and I hate it because it's just, like, it would take me a lot of time to go organize it. So I love the idea, but the problem is understanding the voice recognition. Uh, yeah, so on voice recognition, uh, there are currently some web APIs, but yes, it's still not perfect. What makes these things perfect is when you have that big work effect, when you have more people using it more frequently, then this thing becomes more efficient. What I add to this feature is go back, because this is all uh, what I was uh, planning is, it is all uh, dated notes, so it would be like uh, you recorded this part on this time, so you can go back and check, and if there are any words that are not matched, you go back and edit. And it will read back the server, and next time, you can have it more edited. Also, uh, possible is having a voice in it. This is a really common frustration that you know, millions of us have that Google should frankly own, or some company like Google, because they do this processing all the time. So if there's an opportunity, um, we're expecting it to be covered, unless you have a headline that says, you know, uh, some sort of PhD in advanced language processing, or in um, in cognitive science, that, that you can present that information in a way that is just better than Google will figure out, or something like that. So that you need a headline in order, I think, to get traction with this idea, even though we all want it. My take. Did I, is, that, is that right? Am I full of money, or am I giving him... It's well, challenging. Uh, he could he could get the headline by s saying he's leveraging existing um, technology. That would help. He said APIs. So yeah. We, we know that. Every time, every time I say, hey, Google, or OK, Google, blah, blah, uh -huh. it's going off to some server farm, and they're going to parse and figure out what I said. That's right. So we yeah, maybe, maybe let us know. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody. and getting everybody a chance to learn and exchange and delightful uh, what you guys participated in. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Roy Terry, uh, Primal Pitch, my partner back there, Steve. And uh, if you want to go into in-depth conversations, if you want to spin the pitch and the message and the clarity and some boom, I can help you out. Steve can help you with the business model. And together we're kind of a dynamic duo. We don't have the name yet. Maybe it's the odd couple? I think we're odd couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's definitely odd. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank